Ryan, thanks for sitting down with me for a few minutes. I want to get to know you better and I want everyone (laughs) else to get to know you better. So what I thought I'd do is ask you some rapid fire questions. Well, they're not going to be that rapid. Okay. You can go into as much detail as you want to. Deal. First of all, what was the earliest memory you have of singing in front of people? Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. Um, I was sitting in my, my parents' living room. I was probably six or seven and everybody kind of was discovering at the same time that I could sing and it was something that I really loved and my parents kind of put me on the spot and they were like hey you know let him sing for the family and I remember they were sitting all on the couch and I walk in and I was so nervous you were so nervous to sing in front of your yeah, family to sing in front of the family because <laughs> yeah. it was like extended family and stuff we had a party and yeah and so I got up there and they had to do some coaxing to get me up there but I got up there and sang and Everybody clapped and applauded, and then I was hooked. <laughs> yeah, it's contagious for sure. Um, mm-hmm. So you came to town to be a songwriter. Yep. And obviously a singer too, but you started out writing songs. Um, when you're writing and you're going through that process, what usually comes first for you? Is it lyrics or the melody first? Typically the idea. So yeah. form the idea, and then melody, I feel like, would come second, mm-hmm. and then kind of fill in the blanks with the lyrics. Do you like to work with a lyricist as a writing partner, or do you like a track guy? Like, yeah, what does that look like? I love to have a producer in the room because we can yeah. walk out same day, you know, with the with the track, and they they really help inspire the direction of where the song's going to go, the feel, the sound. Um, but I do love. I'm kind of a melody guy. That's my strength when I walk yeah. into a room, and I love to have a lyricist in there that just speaks different than I do, mm-hmm. you know, and kind of has so we can have that yin and yang and go back and forth. These are not my questions. They're from a lot of your fans and listeners. Uh, Who's your favorite flat? Oh, I don't know. Joe Don was, he was pretty, uh, uh, I mean, Jay. Jay. Jay, There you go. Yeah. Now now we're on track. Mr. DeMarcus. Now we're on track. (laughs) All right. Ryan, describe what it was like the first time you were on stage at the Grand Ole Opry. Oh, man. I was so nervous. You know, I had my whole family there. The Grand Ole Opry has always been something that was a big a big goal for me, you know, a pillar for Mm -hmm. me in my career. And my grandfather, how I was introduced to the Opry is we used to sit down after Sunday dinners or Saturday dinners, whatever it was, and we would watch the Grand Ole Opry together. And he would introduce me to it and be like, hey, that's, you know, and point out all the people. And he said, one day you're going to be up there, kid. And that was one one thing that he left me with when when he passed is the dream. He always knew my dream Mm -hmm. was to be on that Opry stage. So when I stepped into that circle for that, that first time, that moment, I walked in there, had so much anxiety, so nervous, and then I stood in the circle and all of a sudden this like peace just came over me. Curtain went up and played the show and everybody sang Salt, Lime, and Tequila back. It was yeah. one of the coolest experiences ever. That circle, there's something magical about that. It's yeah. almost a spiritual experience, isn't it? hundred percent. I mean, it's it's truly, and unless you've done it, you don't really quite understand what everyone's talking about. But I yeah. certainly know from, from myself, I felt the same exact way the first time I was on It was really stage. cool, just that yeah. piece that came over. Did you ever have a chance to go when you were a kid growing up to the opera? No. Um, I did go one time with my grandpa, actually, but that was like when I was up in college. Oh, yeah, cool. So I got to experience that, and that was really special. All right, Ryan, is there a lucky item that you have to always have on stage with you? Do you take anything out there with you? No. A drink? (laughs) That's a lucky item. (laughs) That's That's about it. Loosen me up a little bit. (laughs) Our next question, Ryan, is what's your beard maintenance like? Uh, Oils, berries? Do Ooh, do I do put that? some beard oil on it. You do? Yeah, man. And who you, trims it for you? You, you got do, you, to. I do. You do? Yeah, man. You got to invest in a That's, good trimmer. It's nice work, You man. know, keep it... I, you know, I, I switch it up every now and then. Yeah. I go. I went big a couple years ago. Then I went back with it. Now I'm trimming it down on the sides. and It's a whole thing. Do you have like the manscaping kit with the, all of the guards and everything? Do you think I'm a rookie? Yes, yeah, but you don't can't use the same one on your face you use on your balls. No, right? of course not. No. That would be unsanitary. That would be unsanitary. (laughs) (laughs) This is going to go south really quick. Real quick. (laughs) Uh, Okay, our next question, Ryan. Mm -hmm. Is it easy for you to take life with a grain of salt, lime, and tequila, or are you easily stressed out? Um, I think it's a mental game. Like, if I... If I get off that mental course, then yes, I can. I can very easily get stressed out. Um, Just having two kids career you know that as you know as an artist you get pulled in so many different directions 
But that's why we wrote Salt, Lime, and Tequila. It was literally like we sat in the room with two of my friends and and said we want a song that when we hit those moments of anxiety, we could turn on and it just decompresses us. It takes yeah. us back, you know, to um, just relaxing and enjoying life. And it's funny because every time my kids start to go crazy or like crying, whether we're in the car on a road trip or in the house, we'll turn on Salt, Lime, and Tequila and everybody just mellows out. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see here. Our next question, Ryan. Yes, sir. <laughs> We're all creatures of habit. We all yep. get into our routine. Is there an emoji that you wish you didn't use so much? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> um, I uh, I do the hang ten a lot. Like that's one of my favorites. Yeah, that's just being, the one that drives me crazy. Yeah, being send me being a Florida time. boy. Yeah. <laughs> just I would say that's the correct answer. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, Jay. Let's try to thanks, buddy. Not use that as much this year in 2022. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I, you know, which face I use is that <laughs> the winky, like with the tongue, yeah, with the out. tongue. And every time it's just like right there, and it's so easy to push. And I hate that I use it all the time. All the time, it's ridiculous. I, I stopped using the fire emoji. Yeah, I feel like that one's a little. It's overused. Yeah, yeah. That's I, like 2019. So 2019. So 2000. Um, okay, our next question. <laughs> what were your earliest musical influences growing up? Oh, man. Um, I sat in the back of my mom's station wagon. I'm the baby of, of three boys. And so, you know, mama played DJ and she always listened to Vince Gill and George Strait. And, mm -hmm. you know, I always say Vince Gill taught me how to sing. George taught me how to tell a story. Oh, wow. And then middle school rolled around and I started diving into like R&B and Usher and Brian McKnight and Boys to Men and um, really fell in love with Brian McKnight and just kind of, I always loved singers. You know, that was the thing. Yeah. So they were a huge influence. Rascal Flatts, Keith Urban. I mean, you guys are half of the reason that I came to Nashville. So I appreciate that. Yeah, that, man. That really means a lot. Paved the way. Thank you so much. Um, well, it's exciting to see that there are people that care about singing mm -hmm. like you do and care about songwriting. And it's a privilege to pass the torch to the younger generation, Thank such you, man. as yourself, even though we're only a couple of years apart. Yeah. Uh, but you know what I mean? The next generation of, of course. singers you know, is what like, I mean. Not necessarily age-wise. Yeah, I no. feel you. <laughs> What's your spirit animal? Oh, that's a great question. Oh, my spirit animal. I think this is going to sound really weird, but I think it's dolphin. Like, because I'm a Florida boy, I grew up in the water, like salt in my veins. That's a great answer. Yeah. They I can love that. They can whoop up on some, you know, if they need to defend themselves. But, yeah. But they're sweet natured creatures. That's a great answer. Thank That's you. a really great answer. Thank you, sir. I didn't expect that to be so uh, <laughs> philosophical. <laughs> thought I was going to be like, threw me tiger, off there. lion, yeah. <laughs> <It's> cheetah. <Yeah. laughs> All right. When you have your own bus someday, yep. what's one item that you're going to put inside of it to make it uniquely your own? Gosh, just thinking about having a bus and getting out of the van gets mm -hmm. me excited. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Uniquely my own. Um... I don't know. Like, I would love to travel with my dog one day. I think oh, it'd be yeah. so cool. We have a little golden doodle at the house, Nala. She's the sweetest. Be awesome to have her on the bus. Over your kids and wife. Of course. I totally get that. Yeah, man. Um, I would make a suggestion and tell you, you definitely want to put a turd chopper on there because you don't want to be stopping at it. every truck stop <laughs> the turd to chopper. let every, the whole band off at different points. See? You'll never get there. Wisdom. See? Wisdom. That's experience. a life spent on the road right there, my yeah, friend. Yeah, man. The old turd chopper. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the old grinder. Yeah. Turd grinder. Um, okay, here we go. Our next question. Now that you're about ready to release your very first single to radio, what do you hope that people know about you, Ryan the person, when they hear Salt, Lime, and Tequila on the radio? Oh, gosh. That's a, that's a great question. Um, I know. I, I wrote these. You wrote these, yes. That's why I get it. I hope they know that that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. That's a huge, huge part of my story. You know, yeah. I've been doing this for a long time. And pe when people reach out and they leave comments or they leave likes, whatever it is, however they engage and, and connect with the song, that means the world to me. 
you know, that's what it's all about. It's all about connecting with, yeah. with people and, and making fans and, and getting out on the road and meeting them and all that. So I just hope that they know I appreciate it and I don't take it for granted. That's an excellent answer. Thanks, man. It's the truth. All right. Who was the first celebrity you ever met? Ooh. <laughs> first celebrity. The first show I ever opened and I got to, this was probably the first celebrity I met, ever met was Neil McCoy. Oh yeah, and I love Neil McCoy. That He's dude the best. could put on a show. He's amazing, and he was He's so such a great kind. Actor. Like he took me up on the bus. It was the first bus I ever been, went on, and uh, my parents came with me, and we we sat there and just talked like we were old friends. It was amazing. He gave me some some great advice, and you know, it was it That's was pretty awesome. awesome. He's yeah. a great, great, great guy. Good human. He sure is. Uh, this is this is a great question. I love this. Um, so, what do your folks think about all of your success so far? Oh man, they're so happy. They just came up for the launch party and um, they've never really missed an event. You yeah. know, my parents are incredible. When I played soccer, they never missed a soccer game. When I do music, you know, it's like, unless I'm on the other side of the country, they're there. Yeah. Did and they so, spank you growing up? Um, I got a, a They few, spanked that little bottle? I got a few whoopings <laughs> growing up, for sure. They kept me in line, but they're so excited. They're just like, you know, me following my dream and, and it kind of coming to fruition and yeah. getting able, being able to like stand on stage and, and sing my songs and all that. Like they're just, they're so proud. That's it's amazing. So great. That's great. Uh, who's your favorite flat? Uh, well, Jodon had the hair. Um, mm -hmm. But I guess. I'm sorry, uh, Ryan. That's oh, the wrong answer. Sorry, uh, J Jay, <laughs> Mr. Demarcus. Bass is my favorite instrument. <laughs> oh, yes. I knew I loved you. Um, what was your. You're already signed, by the way. You don't have to flatter me now. You, you, yeah, you, you know. through that process. <laughs> uh, so, what was your first concert you ever went to? Brooks and Dunn. Brooks and Dunn. Yep. Brooks, Hi, working man. Brooks and Dunn, man. We uh, were at uh, Sunrise Amphitheater down in South Florida. It was. The coolest experience. That's awesome. Yep. What is your favorite brand of tequila now that you're signed and you're uh, on your way to being a big star? Yeah. Do you cut your own limes or do you have somebody else do it for you? I have have you gotten all uppity? I, of course, have a lime person. Yeah. I, I would carry one too. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah, you got to. Uh, favorite brand of tequila? Anything that's free. <laughs> Anything that's free. Yes. <laughs> no, honestly, my favorite brand, no joke, is uh, Old Dominion came out with one. And we toured with them a bunch last year and the year before. And um, uh, it's Cantera Negra. It's oh, yeah. incredible. If I'm sipping tequila straight, their extra Añejo is amazing. Margaritas, the Blanco, the Silver. So cool. So good. Our next question, Ryan. Bring it. Are you going to get your CDL license and learn how to drive the bus? In case your driver comes down with a crippling case of diarrhea in the middle of a run. <laughs> no. You're not? not? Not doing it. Not doing it. You should do it. Do you have your CDL? Yes, I do. I got it really? in college. Well, I yeah. guess I need to get my CDL because I want to be like you. Well, no. I mean, it's not about being like me. I would tell you to do it so that if he gets sick, if he yeah. really does like have to leave the tour, if he gets a kidney stone, mm -hmm. I, I've actually had to drive the bus a few times. This is very specific. I'm, kidney yeah. stone and diarrhea. diarrhea. Well, yeah. you never know what's going to hit. And now with all the variants with COVID, where they might have the latest, greatest. Yeah. You know, so. It's a good idea. That's forward thinking. I would uh, I would consider it. Okay. Just, I trust just two you. guys talking. I trust you. Our next question is, how excited are you to be the flagship artist on Red Street Country? I don't even know if, if there's words to describe how excited I am. I have um, been doing music for a long time. And been trying to find my voice in the writer's room and, you know, I've written thousands of songs and to be a part of a family that gets it and a family that um, just truly understands what I'm trying to accomplish mm -hmm. and has the same beliefs. And, you know, one of the biggest things for me when we started talking about this was I could tell immediately that we had the same values. Yeah. You know, family and God, mm -hmm. huge part of it. You explained to me last night what Red Street means and paved by the blood of Christ. Yeah. Like, as you saw last night, I got a little emotional, yeah. like hearing that because I didn't know that, but I sensed it and I felt it. And that's the beautiful thing about this team is that yeah. everybody's showing up to win and we're all doing it for the right reasons. 
Well, I'm so proud of you. Thank you Thank so you, much. And I know that there are great things ahead for you, and I can't wait to watch it. Hey, it's going to be amazing. From your mouth to God's ears. Let's do Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Thanks. Thanks, bud.